I have really a, a great pleasure in uh, introducing our next speaker, uh, Hiroshi Taka, who I've been privileged to work with for about 30 years. Uh, and um, just to appreciate somebody who does extraordinary work, both in helping to nurture and grow grassroots movement uh, and integrating that uh, while uh, uh, working with diplomats and, and working with, with uh, uh, sympathetic governments. It's really quite remarkable. Uh, Taka is representative director, formerly the general secretary of Gensukyo, the Japan Council Against Atomic and Hydrogen Bombs. Prior to uh, serving as the general secretary, uh, Taka was Gensukyo's international secretary. In his youth, we once were young, uh, he represented the Japan Democratic Youth League in Europe, Vietnam, and other nations. Taka um, was born uh, at the end of World War II, and just like many other people, he joined in the student movement in the first half of the 1960s. Uh, then, the youth then um, in the youth movement in the second half of the second de decade, and in the 1970s, he visited many countries, uh, such as Vietnam, uh, during the period of truce in 1973. Uh, he visited Chile uh, in the period of the Allende government in 73 and, and other countries. He began to work in the national office of Gensukyo in 1984 and met many leading peace activists in Japan uh, and, and overseas. Uh, from 1987 until early 2000, he was assistant general secretary. Uh, and then in February 2000, he was appointed to the post of secretary general. Uh, in 2011, he ostensibly retired from uh, his, his leadership role uh, to become the representative director and co-chair of Gensukyo, where he still plays a leading role. Thank you, Taka, for joining us. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak, and thank you for the, uh, the introduction. Yesterday, I walked in a heavy rain with you, and I discovered again that the United States has two different faces. 30 years ago, I joined the uh, Your Peace March Continental Walk. At that time, too, I found that there were two different faces. One face seems to be more aggressive and arrogant, but the other face is far more gentle, peace-loving, and friendly to the world. I'm glad that now, this time, many Japanese joining in a peace march, uh, march yesterday found and came to the same conclusion that you have a wonderful face in the United States. Yesterday, in the park, before the march, we divided ourselves into several groups and we collected signatures. I discovered another thing. More people in the United States gave their signatures for the, for the appeal from Hibakusha, far more than we collected in Japan. Yeah. So, despite all turns and twists, world is changing, and cha world is more and more driven by the people like you. And so does the disarmament yeah, move in international politics. Our organization was founded in 1955, 10 years after Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Shortly after, the, the hydrogen bomb test at the beginning. Some, more than half of the Japanese signed the petition demanding the total abolition of nuclear weapons in those days already. And then in 1955, we held the first world conference against the energy bombs. But why 10 years after Hiroshima and Nagasaki? The reason is, Japan was placed under occupation for seven years. Anything to report about Hiroshima and Nagasaki was prohibited. The Allied Forces leader, American military leader, declared that all those who should die because of the radiation have already died. So no assistance was given to the Hibakusha no report was given. All documented materials, photos were confiscated. Simply, the damage was made secret. It was 12 years after the bombing. For the first time, Hibakusha got the first aid, but too late. 
in the most difficult time for, for Hibakusha, losing any relatives on whom they could rely, died. They lost the houses. They lost their, the means to live at a time when they needed real help. No help was given by United the Allied Forces, no Japanese government. Only grassroots helped. This is not subject I speak now, but something important is that for peace movement, for our movement, it is essential to make known the truth about the damage that took place under the mushroom cloud, not over the mushroom cloud. That is what we have been engaged for more than 60 years, to make known the truth, statements, and, and the testimonies of Ibakusha to the world and to the generation, present generation, and should be given to the next generation. In a more, in more fashionable way, we say, to make known the humanitarian consequence. Now things are changing, apparently changing. I'm glad that I took part in a, confer in a conference of the United Nations in March, and, in, and now majority, overwhelming majority governments now speak in the same language as we do. They say humanitarian consequences. They give the priority to, to Hibakusha to speak. It's really wonderful. And when I saw the draft text of the treaty, it was truly moving for us. The first paragraph says there should never be nuclear weapons used again. That is what we said 62 years ago in some other words saying that invention of nuclear war. That's the same thing. And in the first, the art, article first it says it should ban development Manufacturing, possession, and the, the testing, as well as the use of nuclear bomb. That's what we said in some other words, saying that a total ban and the elimination of nuclear weapons. And Article 5 recognizes the need to help Hibakusha under humanitarian law. That's what we say, the relief and solidarity with Hibakusha. Those things for which we have worked for more than 60 years, are now coming to the top of the international politics to be realized. That's a change we are facing. So we should grasp this opportunity, use it, and to bring the world to a true change, to set the world free of nuclear weapons. I think it, it is possible. Some say that it's just nonsense because nuclear weapon states are, none of the nuclear powers are in the negotiations. I think that is wrong. That opinion does not really understand the uh, true meaning of democracy. In the international politics, Pan Yimun several years ago said, democracy is coming up in the international disarmament the efforts. Majority speaks for the abolition of nuclear weapons. And that, that majority came to decide the major direction of the human, human race to, to move. December, no, so December last year, yes, United Nations General Assembly adopted a resolution. But two months before, the first committee decided. At that time, already 123 voted in favor, and 38 voted against. 38 against opposition is too many. But I tried to analyze and found that of 38, 25 are members of NATO. Four uh, uh, such countries as Japan and uh, other allies, and Russia, and its ally one. Almost all are working, can, uh, are often working with the decision made in Washington, D.C. So in the world, actual fact is that in the American continent, two American continent, there are only two countries that really opposed, United States and Canada. In the Pacific, once called as the American leg, only two countries opposed to a uh, keyword, the Australia and the Micronesia. Even in the largest continent in Asia, only two countries opposed. Do you know what it is? What country it is? Japan, South Korea. 
and one, only one in the Middle East, and zero in Africa. That's a reality. We can change the world. But the most important thing is ch to change our own country. It is really frustrating to see that Japan, the only able country, the government is opposing on the pretext using Korea and China as a pretext to oppose nuclear disarmament. But I assure you that Japan is also changing. Look at Okinawa and that, uh, on that island. All people, all, all political forces come to oppose the military base and the governor. Formerly, he was conservative, but undaunted. All Okinawa, they call. All Okinawa are now struggling to remove the base, wanting Okinawa to become a bridge between Japan and the other Asian countries. And that is coming to the whole of Japan. Now, almost all opposition parties, can you believe Democrats, Social Democrats, Communists, Liberal, all now came to, to be united to defend Article 9 to abandon the war as a means to resolve the international conflict. Ariel said, yes, July 7th, the international community, community will adopt the treaty. Now the focal point will come to each individual country, whether that government will sign and ratify the treaty. That is where the sovereign people should work harder. So the la last thing I should say is we will do our responsibility. As the only uh, bond country, we will increase our efforts to make known further the truth of the or rather consequence, humanitarian consequence if the bomb is used. And one more thing, we assure you that like our friends, British friends, we will do our best to change our own country. Seven, seven years ago, we were told by then Secretary General Pan ki moon who said in the Riverside Church, we will change the world into nuclear weapon that two nuclear weapon free. Nuclear weapon free world is already on the horizon. I ask you to watch your own government. World will finally change. Then the world will thank you. Thank you. <laughs>